All right, so over the last uh, seven or eight weeks, you've heard from a different pastor, and uh, it's not last, uh, and it's not least, uh, and Pastor Weaver introduced Zach as being the guy from Jupiter. I think Luke said he was from Jupiter, Zach was from Mars, I don't know. These guys are kind of weird and far out there, but we love them. They're our youth pastors. Would you give a warm welcome for Pastor Luke as he shares this morning? Thank you, Pastor Jeff. I, uh, I'm not as much from Jupiter as I am from Minnesota. So all the Iowans here say amen, right? Same thing. That's right. Um, well, I can't tell you uh, how honored I truly am and how humbled I am to get a chance to, uh, just to share, honestly, what God has been doing in my own life and how he's been working uh, in me. But before I get started, I want to highlight something that we have an awesome opportunity to part with, partner with Youth for Christ. It's an organization that they're reaching Urbandale schools uh, and doing a great work. Uh, actually, Jesse and Josh South are heading that up. They're over here. They're going to be hanging out in the lobby after service. We, New Hope is partnering with them uh, to serve our community, serve the, the high school students by starting a pancake breakfast. We're hosting it in the chapel. chapel. It'll be two times a month. That's it, and, and we need volunteers. If you can flip a pancake or serve a pancake, we would love your help, and it's a, an amazing opportunity, honestly, to get, get a bunch of students uh, before school and just love on them and, and uh, build relationships to eventually share the love of Jesus to them. So if you're interested, there's a sign-up sheet at the event center. You can do that after service and get to meet these two awesome guys who are doing a great work. So would you just pray with me, God? I just want to give this to you. We give you this morning. I thank you, Jesus, uh, that you're here. I thank you that you're speaking. I pray that you'd help me to step out of the way and you would do what you want to, as we sang earlier. Uh, we pray these things in your name. And everybody said, amen. 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 Well, I want to talk this morning about uh, kind of the overview as the Christian faith as a whole, the, the race marked out for us, as it says in the New Testament, this journey that we are on as Christians. And if you're not, if you're in this place and you haven't fully given your heart to Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of service. And, and I know God is going to speak mightily and do mightily thing, or things to you and through you. Um, but I'm talking once we become a Christian, what does that mean for us till we die? What, is, what, what, is, what does God say uh, and Jesus say in the Bible that we should be doing? A lot of times we think of it as this pursuit of always doing more. I got to do the things that the Bible says, this checklist of I got to read my Bible, I got to give, I got to tithe, I got to forgive, whatever. We, we, we fall into this mode of it's a checklist of doing things uh, for Jesus and and I think Jesus um, didn't want that when he was speaking in the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 48, if you turn there with me, uh, Matthew 5, 48, it says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. All right, so then we could realistically call the altar call. You could come up. And, uh, and then we'd pray and you'd be done. And today, then I'd say, all right, be perfect. Sin no more. Don't ever mess up. Don't ever be human. Right? That's not realistic. And that's not what Jesus was actually saying here. But a lot of times we assume that into our Christian walk. And it creates a lot of burdens for us. We can't be perfect. God didn't create us to be perfect. Jesus was perfect. And but if you take that literal, you're actually sorely missing what Jesus is trying to say in the passage. If you look at the, the actual Greek word for perfect here, it's teleos. I'm probably completely botching that, but that's okay. Um, teleos means complete. And that word is actually derived from uh, telo, which means to set out for a point or a goal or a purpose. So Jesus is saying not to be perfect here, but he's saying set out as your goal and your purpose and as your pursuit to be complete in me, to be whole, to be mature in me. And perfect doesn't imply sinless perfection. Like I said, it means maturity, and we're, we're to pursue wholeness and, and complete uh, in, in Jesus as a, son or, as a son and daughter of God. Um, there's a pursuit that we need to have as Christians 
Uh, and I believe it's not a pursuit of perfection. It's not a pursuit of what we can do, but it's a pursuit of progress. We can always be more complete in Christ. You can be filled up and be whole every day, and on top of that, you can do it tomorrow and have more, and God will give you more and more and more, and this pursuit of progress and maturity and growth, always getting better, always getting closer to God. That's what Jesus is saying in Proverbs 4.18. It says, the way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. Psalm, 19, or Psalm 92, excuse me, 12 through 14. It says, but the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon, for they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. These verses like shine brighter, grow stronger, in old age still produce fruit. The Bible and, and kind of this, this pursuit that we have as Christians is always to be better, to be more, to grow more. And that's something that unifies us all because there's all some aspect of our life as we sit here this morning that we could be better in that we could grow in. And I wanna illustrate this point of that we were created to grow. We were created to have progress. We were created for progress in our lives as Christians. Uh, but not only just spiritually, uh, we were created physically to grow. Uh, this first picture, you can throw that up there. Uh, nope, that's, there you go. That person, thing, blob on the right, that is me as a, as a baby. Uh, I was so fat, uh, someone could say I was so healthy, uh, that uh, I constantly had an angle looking up towards the heavens. Because, so I was very spiritual from a young age. Um, my hair sticking straight up, my mom tells me that she would use every substance imaginable to try to stick that hair down, but it always shoots straight up. I believe once again praising God in the heavens. I don't know. I'm really spiritual, I know. That's my sister. The next one, I'm, I'm 12 or 13 in this picture, trying to be a hippie, I don't know. Uh, the next picture you can go to, this is when I, uh, when I was 18. Yeah, just soak that in for a second. I don't know what I was trying to do with that thing on my face. Uh, I told my mom I would grow it out, so I, when I took my license picture to when I was 18, it could be that, and I'd have to show people that for stuff. Pastor Weaver actually told me when he saw that after I got hired, he said, if you would have showed that to me before we hired you, I don't know if it would have happened. So, and I kind of believe him. It's kind of scary, but praise the Lord for uh, growth, right? Uh, and uh, this, this uh, next picture is what I believe an uh, uh, insight in the future. That's me and my wife years down the road. Um, that's probably what we're going to look like. So, uh, but you were created to grow. Physically, if you, when you are born, you are not meant to stay a baby. You weren't created that way. It would be weird. It would be weird if you stayed that size. You, you, are meant, you are meant to physically and cognitively grow. And I believe it, it, as we, you're meant to do that and created for that purpose physically, God also did that spiritually, that we were created for growth. You were created for progress, always getting better, always becoming more with Jesus. And uh, um, I don't believe in a Christianity, I don't believe in a gospel that we get to a point and we stay the same. And sometimes, myself included, we may get to a point where we just become saved and we become saved and man, it's, it's awesome and we're feeling great and we stay at the same level. Or maybe you've been years in your walk and you're like, man, I, I'm, I, I've dealt with some stuff. I'm pretty good right where I'm at. Or maybe you're in, in older age and you're seasoned and you're like, man, I, you know, I've lived a long, good life and I've really grown to this point. The scriptures and Jesus are saying quite the opposite, that we are meant and created to always grow. No matter what age, stage of life you're going through, you should be growing. You should be learning more. You should be becoming more. And I think of that picture as Christians, uh, a lot of times, and sometimes this may be applied to you, that we go into this survival mode 
where we look at the world and we go, oh my gosh, there's so much going on, there's so much evil, the world is just going to, to, to the pit, it's just, there's, there's no hope for it, the only hope is Jesus, and my only hope is heaven. So I'm just going to curl up in a ball, I'm going to get in my Christian little bubble, and I'm just going to stay that way and I'm going to survive. I can't tell you, I've heard that multiple times. I'm just going to survive till heaven. I just got to make it to heaven. I'm just going to survive. That is unbiblical. In the Bible, Jesus is saying, you are meant not to survive this life, but to thrive as a Christian. You don't have to sit scared of failure or whatever is going on in the world because we were meant to thrive and grow. Um, and, and, and like that verse said, and become more whole and more mature in Jesus. Have you ever seen a sports team try, just try to win, just try to survive that game? That sports team looks a whole lot different than a team that is trying to win. I, I watched an Urbandale basketball game a couple years back, and they were late in the season. It's a big game. They're playing a team that was ranked higher than them and, and better than them, ultimately. Urbandale managed to get this game to go into overtime, and uh, the, mind you, in high school, there's no shot clock, so there's no timer that says you have to shoot the ball. And Urbandale scored the first bucket, and they got the ball back by stealing it or something, I don't remember. But they had the possession of the ball, and they were leading the score. And I kid you not, they held the ball for four minutes straight. I, I'm not kidding, it was, it was boring. I was yelling boring because I wanted to see something. And I'm an Urbandale fan. They held the ball, they were at half court line, and the defender wasn't engaging them, so they could sit there all day, and the guy just sat there with the ball holding it. Four minutes. Now that shows to me, well, and mind you, the end result, they actually lost the game because of it. They let the time go all the way down, the other team stole the ball, they scored, they won the game. <laughs> Silly, that's crazy to me. It's dumb. They're just trying to survive, but there's a difference that we can see in a sports team that's just trying to survive. But what about your Christian life? What about our walk with Jesus? Are you just trying to survive? Ah, oh, I'm a sinner. I can't do right. I'm not perfect. There's no way I can live up to that. I'm just trying to survive. There's no way I can do that. No, we were created to thrive. Uh, I was had an opportunity to sit in, in my office and talk with a, a young man that graduated from Urbandale a couple years ago. And uh, this was actually like two months ago. I sat with him and he believes in Jesus. He believes in God. His family is not churched. He, he, he at one point has accepted Jesus in his heart. But his biggest struggle is he's, he's pouring out his heart to me. He said, Pastor Luke, I, I don't know if I can give my whole life to Jesus. And I said, why not? Why? why? Jesus is begging you and he's there for you. He said, I, I can't live up to the Christian standard. I know in my life I'll fail. I'll mess up. There's no way I can live up to that. And this is a, a man that he believes in Jesus, but he's saying, I, I'm, I'm not going to give my whole life just because I know I, I'll fail. And so many times we're burdened by this, of this survival or focus on this perfection piece that we sit and we, we're being held back stagnant, not growing in our faith. And uh, Jesus, is, Jesus says in the scriptures that I have overcome the world. What more do you need to thrive in this life? What more do you need? God made us for progress. God made us to mature and to grow. If you think about it, the word disciple actually means learner. Learner. In the business world, you're, you're at seminars, you're growing, you're doing extra training, you're always learning and getting better because why? It's going to affect everything you do. And there should be no difference and it should be more important that we as Christians are always learning. We're always growing. We're always becoming more, letting God do things in our life to help us progress and not just stay stagnant at a point that we never grow and we never move forward. Shameless plug. Sunday school is a perfect opportunity for that. Perfect opportunity where you get to hear from some amazing people who are spirit-led and spirit-filled, and you get to learn and you grow. And that affects everything that you do. 
But how do we thrive in the midst of life? How do we thrive? How do we not go? How do we uh, go into survival mode? How do we move forward in everything that we do? Um, there's two ways, and I hope if you're taking notes this morning, you write these down. There's two ways that you can always progress and you grow and you mature in Jesus. The first one is you need to know whose you are. Know whose you are. Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Jesus Christ first possessed me. Here's the thing. We do not live for perfection, we actually live from perfection. Jesus went to the cross, a sinless, perfect being, and took our place, and therefore in his eyes, we were made perfect. And so therefore, it's not a, desti a destination to reach, like once I become this many years old in my faith, I'll reach that level or be close to it. No, it is a platform to launch you then to have this thriving Christian life and this amazing spirit-filled walk where you're constantly learning more about God. How amazing the promise it is that God is so much bigger and greater so we can never fully get enough of him. We can never have too much. In fact, we can never have all of God because that would limit him to our feeble brains. And so therefore, every day you should be getting more of God. You should be filling up every day on something new and fresh. That's why he's called the creator for a reason. He wants to create in you something new and create in you a different view or a different uh, experience or whatever. Know whose you are. There is no condemnation because what Jesus did on that cross. So therefore, we don't have to focus on what we do or what we don't do, but we can focus on who we are and whose we are in Jesus. See, because he purchased us by his blood, therefore, we don't have to be perfect because we're purchased. And there's no expectation of being perfect because God knows we're sinful and that's, well, that's why we require repentance and forgiveness. Know whose you are. There's no ashamed of your past. There's no feel, fear, excuse me, of failure. You're purchased. You're possessed in the family of God. Number two, turn to your neighbor, say number two. Are we awake this morning? We good? Am I boring you enough? Get you out of here. Number two is know who you are. The first one is know, know whose you are. The second one is know who you are. I want to illustrate this in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what Jesus taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. We see this contrast of this Mary spirit versus a Martha spirit. And Martha was distracted by the dinner. She was distracted by the details. And she was distracted by what she was doing. Even though she was the one that invited Jesus into her home, she was the one that wanted to serve Jesus, so it wasn't ill intent. But she was distracted by what she was doing, even though she was serving Jesus directly. But what she was doing was a distraction from a divine encounter with Jesus. Can you imagine that? Us serving Jesus can actually distract us from seeing Jesus. Even on a Sunday morning, us serving Jesus, even being here, because that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. That's what we do. But being here and doing church can actually distract us from seeing Jesus and encounter him. We, on a Sunday morning, on a Wednesday, you can be all around God, but you may not be with him. You can be serving him as Martha was all around Jesus. Jesus was in her home. But she wasn't with God. She was distracted by her deeds. And you need to, we need to discover that myself. 
included, need to discover that doing will never be as important as impactful as being. Doing will never be as important as being. And, and that's why we're called human beings, not human doings. It's who we are. Jesus cares less. Someone needs to hear this this morning. Jesus cares less about what you're doing and more about who you are becoming. He cares more about who you're becoming, like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning and growing and, and, and figuring this out. You see, in the future, she's always at Jesus' feet. When she's weeping for Lazarus, she's at Jesus' feet. When she was able to grow and move forward and depend on him, and Martha learned a valuable lesson this day, that what she does isn't as important as who she is and who she's becoming. And, and here's the, the fact is what we do with Christ is far more important than what we do for Christ. What you do with him. See, who you are matters, and becoming more like Jesus is progress, but it doesn't happen, and progress doesn't happen by what you do. You can't accomplish progress. You can't manufacture that by doing church things and even serving Jesus. It's who you are. It's who you're becoming. Worship team, would you come? I want to give us time at the end um, to give you an opportunity to respond, but... So am I saying this morning that serving Jesus is unimportant? Absolutely not. I don't want you to hear that. Well, uh, Pastor Luke said I don't have to come to church anymore as long as I'm becoming more like Jesus. That's not what I mean. I don't have to tithe anymore. I don't have to give anything because I'm becoming like Jesus. It's who I am. That's not what I'm saying. They're actually very connected, what you do and who you are, but one has to precede the other. Okay? What do I mean by that? Everything that you do is a byproduct of who you are, okay? So think about this. If you struggle with unforgiveness, once you, 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 can't, do unforg you can't do forgiveness, you, what you do is you seek Jesus and you find out that he showed the ultimate example of forgiveness, therefore you are taught and grow into then being able to forgive. It's becoming, then doing. If you struggle with being generous, you, it's not trying to teach yourself these certain ways that you can plan better and set aside money. No, become more like Jesus. Seek him, be, be more whole and complete and mature in Jesus, and you're gonna find out you can't outgive God. You can't outbless God. And then therefore, you are gonna grow a heart through the spirit working in you of being more generous. It's about who you are, not what you do, and everything else is a byproduct. So I'm not saying those things aren't great. I'm not saying serving as an usher isn't amazing and God looks on that with favor. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you, you seek Jesus, he's gonna grow and mature you, then you're gonna find yourself having a heart for the house, having a heart to serve, having a heart for people, as he did. You see that a good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. It's about the identity in who you are. And who are you? You're purchased. You're possessed into the kingdom. No longer have to be perfect or required to do these deeds, but Jesus just cares about who you are. And I love this fact, and Craig, Groesch Craig Groeschel says this. He says, living holy isn't the path to knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus is the path to living holy. They're connected, everything you do, like I just said. It's all about knowing Jesus. How are you progressing with Jesus? Are you at a place where you said, I've, I've made my mark, I'm at my level, I've set my bar, wherever. I used to have this ridiculous, uh, this ridiculous quote when I was in high school and college. I, I used to tell people, I set my goals low so I can achieve them. It's dumb. I hope that's not your Christian walk. I hope you come every Sunday morning going, God, you have something amazing for me this morning, and I'm going to be changed by you. My old pastor used to say, uh, a real encounter with Jesus means change, means growth, means something is becoming more whole. You're becoming more mature. So where in your life, where in my life can we become better? Can we progress and see this, this, this journey and this pursued as a Christian as a whole, it's not about your destination, it's about the journey because Jesus loves the process. He loves your pursuit and through the pursuit, you will have progress. That makes sense. 
through your pursuit of Jesus, you will have progress. But are you pursuing Jesus to grow? Paul sums this all up, this whole point in one verse, or a couple verses in one chapter. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away but we do it for the eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing or going through the motions. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Like I said before, progress applies to every single person, pastor and myself included. It applies to every one of us. We all have an aspect in here that we can be progressing better. That maybe we've left stagnant, we left ungrowing, and we're content with that place, but God wants it to grow. God wants to more, He wants to mature you. He's saying, be whole. I have so much more for you. I want you to thrive in this life, not just survive, not just make it through. He's got so much for you. Would you stand up with me? I want to take a moment of just self-reflection in this place. God wants to speak to you specifically. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? This is a moment I want, and I know that God is going to speak to you and highlight an area of your life that you need to be progressing. Maybe you've let it die a little bit or grow into this hibernation state. Maybe it's an area with your spouse. Like I said, maybe it's, for, maybe it's forgiveness. Maybe it's, it's being more generous and not caring so much about the dollar and caring more about what Jesus wants for you and how he wants to use you. Maybe it's taking ownership of the ministry of your family and of your kids. Maybe you've let that slip by. And I don't want this to be a guilt trip, but I want it to be an empowerment moment to know God wants more for me in this area. Therefore, he's going to give it to me if I seek his face. We're gonna have an opportunity to seek his face this morning. Maybe you're in this place and you would say, Pastor Luke, I've never fully given my heart to Jesus. I've never fully stepped into this race that he's called me to run. I love this quote by C.S. Lewis. It says, we all want progress, but if you're on the wrong road, progress means doing a U-turn and walking back to the right road. In that case, the man who turns, who turns back soonest is the most progressive. Maybe it's for you, it's repenting, which means doing a full turn. And Jesus wants your whole heart so you can thrive. You no longer have to be bogged down by the dues of being a good person, but you can be concerned with who you are in Jesus Christ. I'm gonna pray, and this is what I would like, is you to give God a chance to minister to you. If that means that you sit down and you have an honest conversation with your spouse, that's progress. If it means coming down and worshiping his face and seeking him, that's progress. If it means seeking someone out in this place that you may have wronged and you need to ask for forgiveness, that is progress. Let God make you and mold you into the person that he wants you this moment. So as I pray, the worship team is going to lead us through a song that I love. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Know that you, I, I don't have to live up to some expectation. As long as I seek Jesus' face, he's going to mold me and make me to who he wants me to be. God, we just worship you this morning. We thank you in the name of Jesus that you have growth for us in store. I thank you, Jesus, that you want to make us complete. You want to make us whole through you and seeking your face. I pray against the burden that someone may be carrying in this place of, of I need to do more for Jesus. I pray that that would, be, that would be broken and you would teach that person and teach us to seek you more. I pray for this pursuit of progress, that it would be a stamp upon our hearts and our minds that every day we're going to be more like Jesus than yesterday. Every day I'm going to be more forgiving than yesterday. Every day I'm going to give more than yesterday. Jesus, I thank you that you died for us. And therefore, that is a platform to propel us into progress. We worship you, Jesus. I pray you'd speak to your people what we need most in this moment. In your holy name, we worship you. Amen. Take a moment. Take a moment. Let God speak to you.